Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, or if you're listening to this on a recording, good morning or good whatever time of the day it might happen to be. And my name is David Munro Jones. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the International Authority for Professional Coaching and Mentoring, and I am extremely pleased today to be joined by um, two members of uh, Team Coaching International, um, John and Catherine. Um, I've known Team Coaching International for many years. I was very fortunate to attend their program for the certification of one of their world-leading um, assessment tools so that with regards to uh, teams. And I was equally more fortunate also to go through their CTPC program, which I would uh, strongly recommend to anybody who is interested in, in team coaching. Um, something that you might not know about John, which he may or may not mention, um, and this is for those people who uh, haven't seen the interview that I had with him, he is very good at throwing little round discs. Um, <laughs> and is uh, also sort of like a, a world Frisbee champion, uh, which yeah. I find really, really impressive. But I'm, I'm not going to spend uh, any more time uh, talking about myself. Um, thank you very much for joining. I'm sure that you will get a, a lot out of this. For those of you who are joining, if you can mute yourselves, which I'm going to do uh, shortly when I hand over to John, and if you have any questions, we'll have some time at the end for question and answers. And as always, please stay to the end of the webinar because you never know what benefits there may be for those who stay to the end. So with uh, no further ado, I hand over uh, directly to John and uh, potentially to Catherine as well. Right on, thanks David. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is John Sandal. I am a, a faculty member and a longtime practitioner with Team Coaching International. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Catherine, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, good morning. And I'm Catherine Windsor and I'm an executive and leadership coach and I recently went through the certified team performance training coaching. And so uh, whilst John is the very seasoned, experienced uh, coach of teams and super teams. I'm the newbie, the executive coach who started adding team coaching to my practice and i um, thrilled to be here to answer any questions you might have about that journey. And it's a great one. Right. And uh, just to uh, uh, piggyback on David's comment, we will have a, a little special offer for people who've attended the webinar at the very end of this call and I uh, hope you'll join us. So uh, a little bit uh, more about, sorry, Gonna get this to go. Um, who is this guy? Well, I, you, you've met me if, potentially if you watched the little interview that David and I did. Uh, and, and who is, what is T, Team Coaching International is probably the bigger question. So um, Team Coaching International was founded uh, by two people, one of which I know very well. He is, he is my uncle, uh, Mr. Phil Sandahl, and his uh, partner, Alexis Phillips, uh, were both uh, individual coaching, uh, from the individual coaching world, an executive coaching world, and um, we're noticing this need, this need for team, uh, team coaching. And, and, and at the same time, sort of hearing people talk about doing it, but having a, a real a lack of understanding of, you know, kind of what, how do we do this? And what does this look like? And, and, and sort of how does this work even? Um, along the same lines, they, uh, they recognized, um, that there was a, a deep need, and in particular, Alexis uh, noticed there was a need for some sort of assessment. Um, that that one of the problems with team coaching is the um, the time intensive, uh, uh, you know, outlay for getting to know the team was was and sort of figuring out what was going on with the team uh, was very large, and and so creating an assessment. Uh, was, was kind of her mission and she did, and it's uh, now called the Team Diagnostic, and it's a tool that we use regularly. So uh, the, 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 the idea was born, the, the practice was started, and uh, you know, this is 2006 or seven or so, uh, and, and uh, very quickly real, uh, Phil and Alexis noticed that there was really something here. There, there's, there's a deep need for this work, and a, and a really deep um, uh, sort of set of competencies that apply to team coaching 
that don't always, uh, or that may, may be uh, somewhat different from what we might call individual or one-on-one -on -one coaching. I should also add that their background um, was uh, built uh, also uh, on, in the, um, the world of ORSC, or the C C Center for Right, right, right Relationship, uh, CRR Global, and that that work blended with their, their assessment tools and, and the work that they were doing with teams and sort of has created this, what now is, is the team coaching model and methodology. Uh, so I, uh, along the way, was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and, uh, and, and, and a lot of facilitation of groups and sort of noticed, hey, there's this thing that I'm doing that sounds an awful lot like what my favorite uncle Phil was doing and, uh, and sort of realized that there was something here and, and basically have gone all the way in ever since I've, I've focused, I would say 90, 95% of my practices is, is working with teams primarily for me, leadership teams of businesses, uh, and divisions of uh, bigger businesses that are, um, often struggling to work together well and, and trying to maximize performance. So, um, that's, uh, and yes, I also have the passion for Frisbee. So there's, there's a, a bunch of things going on there. Um, the, the other thing I'll add just briefly for those who are new to this idea of team coaching is if you've done any executive coaching of a leader, very likely that conversation at some point has turned to, well, how do you, how do I apply this great learning I'm getting from you when I'm leading the team? There's this sort of deep need for awareness of how to do that kind of thing. And, um, and what we've found is that uh, it's, it's great for a coach to say, yeah, I can help the team or watch the team. And there's probably some great, curious, powerful questions I could ask and, and be helpful. And uh, often working with a team can feel a little bit disorienting because suddenly you don't have one relationship to manage. You've got 40 or more. Uh, and so uh, the, the level of complication can create a, a a whole lot of confusion for where should my attention be and, and what should I be paying attention to? So we, uh, along the way, have a, a whole set now of assessment tools that can be used to help a, a team coach sort of figure out where a team is in, a, in the timeline, how they're operating. Um, we've got a whole uh, host of uh, competencies and, and skills that we, uh, we know teams need to have to, to perform at a high level. And, uh, and I can show you some of those, and we've got uh, a, a whole set of training that helps uh, people who are interested in doing team coaching work sort of begin to understand sort of how they need to show up. What are the, what are the skills and competencies that they need to bring that, that might be uh, over and above or, or different than they would if they were just working with the leader? Um, most of, oh, sorry, Catherine, you want to jump in? Sure, just to build on that also, yeah. I mean, so as an executive coach, that's exactly what I've noticed, right, is that typically leaders get tripped up on how do I better coach my team, I don't think my team likes me very much, or the team dynamics are, are not that good. And what, uh, so you bec I became aware, and I think that's what I'm learning from TCI also, is the leader is part of a system, right, mm -hmm. and, and then it's, we they are struggling when you ask them, so tell me about the team dynamics. And they just, it's like a gut feel and they give you some kind of not very precise language. And then the realization that most people don't really know how to dissect um, team dynamics, right? Um, so that's why I think TCI is so amazing is that we give them a model, a way of looking objectively at what's really going on. Yeah. So. Uh just, Katrin, why don't you speak to your, quickly, I'm going to bring up a different set of slides here, but can you uh, just speak quickly to your experience um, going through training? What, like, what were your observations as you uh, went through our training program in terms of what you were noticing yes. or feeling? Yeah. So I, I'm a former executive. I have a lot of experience with teams and I love the human factor and always wanted to become a coach, not just the manager who puts on the hat as coach, but actually a professional coach and I had a coach myself when I when I had my own business and found having a coach is one of the best things that can happen to someone so I went through CTI's training and um, and then um, had these leaders who were struggling with teams just like uh, what we were talking about earlier and became fascinated by the fact that oh yeah they're all parts of a system 
And so I signed up, found uh, TCI, of course, because the energy is so similar to CTI. <laughs> and not surprisingly, right, because Phil Sandahl was also the co-author of uh, Coactive Coaching and senior faculty there for many years. Um, so I started with TCI and what the journey for me was like was um, uh, that I loved the online virtual components of the training so I could do it at my own pace and get but the grounding, the basics from the online course. Um, and then when I went to the three-day masterclass, wow, it was such an amazing caliber of coaches, like people who have been doing this work, who are passionately interested in this work, totally committed to coaching, um, really wanting to get good at working with teams, or some of them that have coached teams for a long time. So mm -hmm. I learned from the course, which was highly interactive, immersive, um, you know, it wasn't like an intellectual download, it was experience this, practice coaching a team, a lot of role playing, a lot of exercises, and then um, great conversations with, with that cohort. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought it was fantastic. And then I coached a couple teams and finally submitted using this methodology, which was amazing. And then I finally submitted my um, final homework and became a formal certified team performance coach. Woohoo! Well done. Thank you, Katrin. I, I appreciate you bringing the energy to that. So um, I'm going to bring up some, some, some slides here just to, to think more a little bit deeply about sort of what we're doing and, and maybe who, what we can offer or bring to you. Um, I'm going to bring this up. There we go. So we have some assumptions about kind of who you are that you might be, first of all, uh, already working with teams and you want some tools or some, some understanding of how you can help sort of speed that team uh, coaching process up, um, and, or you are interested in expanding your offerings if you're doing a lot of individual work and you're sort of being asked, like I was refer referencing before, to sort of help teams get there. Um, how can you help that happen? Um, likely you understand, as I've just framed, that it's more complex, that working with teams takes a lot more than, um, than just uh, the same set of uh, skills and competencies of working with an individual at the same time and likely you want a practical approach so so we know that that frankly you need to be able to do something what what can I repeat with the same uh, so that I'm learning as I go and making it uh, easier and, and faster for teams to get where they want to go um, and very likely uh, as you may have heard David say you're looking to align with sort of the people that are in the world doing this work really well. And, and that is uh, one of the things that we love about this community and, and feel like we've helped to create and want to create even more of. So uh, the, the beauty of this uh, is TCI has been around for a long time. We've got thousands and thousands of people who've gone through our work and worked with thousands of teams. Um, the average team that goes through our system uses the whole methodology improves by about 20% which uh, if you're thinking about it from a, um, uh, just an improvement metric, that is a huge number. Um, uh, you know, you will, tr you will struggle to find change management uh, uh, anywhere that's, good, that's happening on that level. Um, our model measures things on two large dimensions, productivity, which is to say things required to get the job done, and positivity, which is things required to do the job together. Um, we want you to be more effective. If you're doing this work, or you're interested in doing this work, or you're seeing the need for this work, which by the way, I'm guessing you are, uh, whether you're here uh, uh, randomly or not, you've very likely noticed there is a deep and, and large and in a very wide need in the world for helping groups of people work together better. And, and often it looks very simply like helping them learn the skills to have hard conversations that they may have been avoiding or, or just are, for whatever reason, are not having. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in doing that work, we are a great place to help you do that. So we provide tools and training along with, of course, ongoing support for team coaches, uh, new, new and old, uh, myself included. Katrin as a newbie uh, and I are, are, are working with folks all the time on, on how, helping them get to a, a more powerful uh, and effective place. Um, as I mentioned, we have a whole host of assessments. We've got um, the standard team diagnostic, which is used with teams, they're all based on the same model. 
uh, uh, the uh, team leader view, a one-person version, the organizational view for the broader organization for, for a, a bigger company that wants to sort of measure these same metrics across many uh, divisions or regions, uh, and then the 360 model, which is used for stakeholders. They can all be compared to each other uh, for, for a graphic uh, comparison, and therefore you can get some understanding of where different uh, people and different systems are, are, are applying for the org view uh, and also, uh, you know, between a leader and a team or stakeholders of a team and the team itself creates lots of opportunities for conversation. Um, the, uh, the system, uh, I should say, the, the tools are, are designed to measure the system. So they are not uh, measuring a whole host of individuals and then comparing each individual to each other. It's giving you a data set that we can compare across uh, the system so that people can look at the system, which is often a new perspective for them. They've, they tend to think of teams as a whole a, a, a subset of individuals, uh, which also creates its own problems when we don't think of it as a system. And uh, you can do it in 20 minutes. It's got a whole uh, set of custom questions you can add uh, at the end if you want to dig in there in, in specific ways. Um, and it's been measured for, for both validity and reliability, which is to say you can trust the results and they are repeatable. Um, so so I, I have used this tool for many years now and, and found that I can basically count on what I'm going to get. And the team looks at it and goes, yep, that's us. And how do we change those numbers? That's uh, kind of where we're at. As I mentioned, it mentions two dimensions. The, the tool measures two high-level dimensions, productivity and positivity. It gets you a footprint creates an opportunity there, along with uh, all of our 14 factors uh, of team performance. You can see all of those words there on the right, our positivity factors, trust through optimism, and then leadership through alignment for our productivity factors. The, the beauty of these maps is we can then, after we've worked with the team over time, we can sort of show improvement. Where did we move the needle based on where we in, intended to move the needle? So. Um, the beauty of it is they are in the everyday language of teams already, so we don't have to learn a whole bunch of new codes uh, and, and translations of what, is, what does that thing mean. Uh, we find that teams can understand what we're talking about very quickly with, uh, you know, in a very short amount of time, I can get a team understanding this data and, and starting to translate it into behaviors and things they'd like to change. Um, You'll notice there are five graphic layers in the tools. They create all kinds of opportunities for conversation. And in our training, you'll notice that we, we offer exercises that build on the data set so we can help a team sort of really feel and embody the data and understand what it feels like it, from a limbic system place so that they have greater urgency to, to create change. Um, we know that teams want to improve logically and often are stuck. Uh, just like individuals. And so helping the team through an exercise and, and some experience can help them understand what does this data really mean? What's it saying? All of this, of course, leads to an action plan as we train our uh, coaches to do. We need to get to a place where we help a team say, all right, so what's next? What, 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 what's going to change as a result of seeing this data? Build that action plan out, often in a sort of simple way with, with an eye on improving one or two of these scores. Uh, and, and seeing, you know, what changes on a monthly basis. Um, most of our uh, coaches use these tools in a sort of, what you might think of as a sort of standard coaching model, right? So we're doing some discovery and assessment uh, that's leading to an action plan, which then, of course, leads to some ongoing uh, coaching, usually once or twice a month for a team. Um, my experience is that teams that need a little more help, uh, I, I'm sort of offering them, more repeatability and depending on how often they meet and what makes sense that they either choose that or they'll say well we just want to have more intensive so we'll do like a full day or a half day every month to sort of help them build out and practice the skills we're working on all of which leads to that as i mentioned final assessment which helps us figure out where did we move the needle what did that do to our business results and our team performance and what's next um there are, as I mentioned, the four different diagnostics. I've sort of already covered that, so we'll keep going. The team leader view is interesting as our uh, certification students get access to that uh, for free for life, which creates for them uh, an opportunity to do some, some ongoing executive coaching with the leader around their, their view of the team and creates an opportunity to sort of introduce the leader to the work as a way of helping them see this might be a useful 
thing for us to do next is, is work with the whole team, which uh, often that team leader view becomes a great business development tool for, for folks. Um, By the way, do, on the team leader view, what I've yep. noticed was when I go in with my executive clients, um, exec, yeah, senior executives, and I use it with them that they suddenly it really is a great tool for them to start seeing me who was just an executive coach yeah to suddenly as a team expert so right. that was really powerful and then that made he go then they go oh i have this team that's struggling and i have that team that's struggling so mm -hmm. it's really shifted their perception of of my brand yep I couldn't agree more. In fact, uh, I, I would even go further and just say, if my experience is that the team coaches we train, if they commit themselves to, to delivering 15 or 20 of those TLVs, they're going to find some teams to work with. Yes. Uh, there is just no way around it. Team leaders get it when they read that report with your help. We also train as part of our training, train you on how to have that conversation. You get a full hour with, uh, with one of our coaches, usually me, uh, to sort of walk you through how to do that well. And what we find is that teams that do that, uh, or should I say, coaches who do that conversation well they get work they they there is a, a very quickly that translates into into real team coaching work um, our training itself essentially uh, is designed to keep get you fully prepared and confident we want you to walk, be able to walk in and work with that team right away it includes four components uh, the the very simple uh, and self-study course called understand and access the tools it's done online by yourself uh, at, at your own pace uh, includes some uh, five lessons and some follow-up tests. Included in that also is that one-hour training on debriefing the team leader view, as well as one D TLV for you to take so you can experience it from the client side. Um, very simply, it gives you a chance to understand how, to, how these tools and assessments work so that you could use them uh, with teams right away. Um, as I mentioned, it includes all of our assessments as well as orientation to how things work and how to start, start thinking about delivering results, to explaining results to teams. Um, and like I said, includes that TLV debrief. The uh, second course is called Accelerated Learning. It's designed to help leaders uh, uh, and team coaches think about uh, what is the underlying theory and, and, and methodology around this idea of team coaching? How do I sort of build this, this practice and, and how do I translate and, and um, mutate my uh, individual coaching skills to become more uh, team coach aligned. Um, it includes eight lessons, the first two of which uh, are done for sales and marketing purposes to help you think about that. Six weekly group calls uh, that are 90 minutes long um, and uh, with a small cohort group that you get to know quite well as well as uh, uh, delivering uh, some, the, some of the team coaching skills and competencies, helping you build out ongoing coaching structure, as well as thinking about getting, how do I start deploying these TLVs? Who should I be deploying them to and so forth? Um, and because there uh, are coaches that have gone through this, get access to the TLV for free, they can start deploying them right away. Um, it's the knowledge base. There are, yes, this is more like uh, uh, one cohort per month in general. Generally, they're done on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, but it sort of depends. Um, and we do have uh, options across the calendar and the, uh, the, the clock so that people in different countries can take uh, a part. In fact, I've had students from literally all over the world in these calls, so, so we'll make, make it work for you. Um, the, the third component is field work. We want you to, to sort of practice this. Uh, our certification includes uh, a uh, full team assessment for free, which is a thousand dollar value up to eight people, which then gets you a chance to start, start practicing, you know, start using the tool. Um, uh, real world experience is often the best way to go and finding a team uh, you, with the TLV can get you very quickly to somebody who's willing to help you sort of practice uh, with them. And, and very often the first team you work with easily covers the investment of doing the work. Uh, finally, the masterclass, uh, this is one I, I definitely want to mention since we have one coming up very soon in London. Um, masterclass is our experiential in-person workshop. It's three full days of practice coaching. 
Uh, we deliver five, the five competencies and 24 different skills that you should be aware of as doing this work in person so you can sort of feel them and practice them and get, get in the sandbox and play with them. Uh, we deliver 16 different potential exercises for you to use with teams uh, along the way and feel them as a, as a team member so you can sort of understand and feel that. Um, we have uh, an opportunity during that course for you to really get to know and share your experiences uh, doing the work with other experienced coaches and, and our uh, very experienced faculty. So um, th this, the dates are wrong here, so I'm going to skip ahead on that. Uh, the four components build on each other, and um, the, 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 the goal of this is to try and meet your needs. So what you'll find is that as we're going through our training, uh, we are you know, we're, we're sort of trying to modify this to, to help you wherever you're at. So some of our coaches come in with lots of experiential one-on-one uh, -on -one work like a Katrin. Some of them come in with uh, just a little bit of that, but a lot more facilitation work or team work. And they're sort of trying to build out that other competency. We're going to help you get what you need to, to make that work. Um, uh, we also, as I mentioned, provide support. So we've got all kinds of different materials on our website. Uh, our students are, are asked to, to contribute to that uh, material. So, so there is hundreds of, of things that we've got uh, collected for, for students to use and, and, and look through um, and apply to their work as well as all kinds of case studies. Um, I could give you any number from my own life. Katrin just had a great experience working with one of her first teams. Uh, uh, and the, at the end of the day, we want you to be successful, so we're gonna do what we need to do to help you sort of learn to do the work and, and provide uh, what, you know, what, what will help you get there. Um, as I mentioned, we have a whole digital library of resources, and we provide some office hours. Uh, these days, uh, we, we, we've got um, also, an alumni call that we've started for our uh, uh, global alumni to help them uh, connect and, and think about what they're doing. Katrin and I are doing those together, so that's fun. Um, as well as ongoing monthly insight webinars around our factors to help people sort of experience the, each of the 14 in a little more detail or, or in a way that can help them apply to their work. Um, and we do offer mentoring for those who would like it. Uh, like I said, we want you to be successful. Um, there are sort of two options. Uh, the, the first is the master class. If you just want to do that, if that feels like the, the, the best entree in, depending on your situation, um, you can just sign up for the master class. We do include the UAT as a part of that, uh, and, and I can explain that that's the understand and access the tools, the online portion, so that you've got that base understanding of the tools before you show up. Um, includes uh, a whole bunch of credits, should those be important to you, uh, and does qualify you to start using the assessments whenever you like. Um, we do have an upcoming master class in London. I want to uh, want to highlight for those who are on the call that Which might is be April five to seven. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Marble Arch. Area. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that. Um, and the other option is, of course, our certification course, which includes all three of the courses. Uh, and includes also that credit for that first team you work with, uh, up to a thousand dollar value for, for a team of eight. Um, our TDA uh, is best in class easily in this in this world. It is there is no, nothing even close to the level of uh, professional detail that you're going to find in our assessment. Um, it also includes, as I mentioned, unlimited use of the team leader view so that you can start uh, deploying that with your uh, various executive coach uh, clients right away um, and includes uh, 60 different credits. And you get the, the honorary title, as uh, Catherine has just uh, earned, of CTPC. Um, the pricing uh, uh, for the master class is $24.95 US, uh, and I'm going to actually uh, ignore that because we have a special code for you all right now. The pricing for full certification is $44.95. And again, ignore this, this code because that's, I'm going to give you a different one. Uh, and uh, just to remind, just sort of wrap it up here, you're, you're not going to find these kind of, this level of tool anywhere else and this kind of training uh, where we're getting you into that, the practice right away as Katrin can uh, speak to. Um, you're going to be able to do this work better than you even think you can uh, very quickly. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's a, it's just a way that we really want you to do the work in a, in a proven and repeatable and reliable way with results. Um, this is a, an example of a before and after for a team uh, that, that we've worked with. And, and you can see, well, you know, 20% is often is the average 
if, if I could give a team that you're working with an extra day of work a week with no extra hours spent, right? That's what 20% means, right? That's an extra day of work and productivity off the bat. Uh, what would that mean in terms of bottom line business results for a team that you might be wanting to work with? So it's, it's a big deal. Um, I do have in here a special offer uh, for our, um, our community, uh, uh, the IA. PCM community today, and uh, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, a special code for all of you is uh, IAPCNM500 gets you $500 off either the masterclass or the total certification package. Up to you. Apply it uh, right away. Uh, that masterclass is coming up here in just a few weeks, um, and in fact, it is on April 5th through the 7th in the Marble Edge area. I think I got it all in there, Katrin. What else have I missed or what would you like to add? Well, I mean, it's interesting to, to, to uh, look at your presentation now that I've got, you know, yeah, have so much more course, experience. Yeah. Right. And um, yes, the assessment is just fascinating and very powerful for people to, to, to really see what's really going on in the team, right? Yeah. Um, because often as an executive, like as a manager, you just kind of guess what's going on in the team. You know, something isn't quite working. And then having the ability to actually see that across 14 objective indicators, right? And, and for the team to have the ability to share anonymously what's going on. Wow. So yeah. that that um, from my experience now, I was like, that really has huge impact. And then what made me smile is the word exercises, what that, um, we learned all these exercises in the master class. And yeah, and, and that, that is actually so powerful too in my work with teams. For example, I used the helium stick exercise, mm. which was so powerful. It gave the team literally just well, I would say within 10 minutes, they totally experienced and got how easily they fall into blaming someone else when, mm. when things go wrong. Yeah. You know, and then when they viscerally experience that, um, not intellectually, but through these exercises, it's all like embodied, like in your bones kind of thing. Then, mm. then they get it and, and then they go, yeah, that's not acceptable. How could we be differently with each other? when that happens so it's very powerful it really allows um teams to pause you know like how how on sports they have timeouts and it's like time to wait let's just time out we need to talk to pause and i think what this coaching does and the tools we have is it we allowing teams to pause to mm -hmm. slow down so that they can speed up more effectively and then another thought that came to me is when you said, well, what's 20% increase, right? Right. And, and, and yes, I, I, I hadn't heard that it's an extra day of work a week. Right. Like, wow. Right. That, that is a lot, right? It's a lot. And at the same time, there's also this other aspect, which is how does it feel to yeah. be on this team? Right. How does it feel to be you on this team? And and what's an increase in people wanting to come to work instead of dreading it, mm. wanting to be with each other? Yep. Driving for uh, uh, for mutual uh, mutual performance in a way that that if you've ever experienced that, which you all have at some point, everybody's been on a highly su successful team. Um, it, once you feel that, you realize, boy, this is a better way to be. There's a better, it's a better way to do it, and, and we can get so much more done. Um, and look, the world is increasingly formed in teams, right? Business teams, uh, you know, community teams. There's just a way that everywhere we look, we are social animals designed to work in small groups. That's, that's the reality. And uh, helping people learn to do that is, is – well, it's my passion and mission, and it's, it's why TCI exists, right? At the end of the day, we're there to help, help coaches help others make that happen. So we want you to be successful with that, and, and we know that there's a lot of needs, so let's, uh, let's go. Um, thanks for all those uh, thoughts, Katrin. Well, well, well said. So I think at this point we can just open it up for questions. Uh, David, do you want to uh, take, take the lead there? I haven't uh, noticed anybody writing any questions yet. Yeah, sure, and I would um... – 
I would encourage anybody who has any questions to either uh, raise the hand or put the question into the into the chat box and, and we will get to it. Uh, John, Catherine, uh, thank you very much um, for that. There were a couple of a couple of areas that uh, I'm going to ask some questions on myself, if I may. Sure, of course, of course. please help us. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one of the uh, one of the slides that you showed showed the um, you know both the the productivity and the positivity uh, sure. factors in terms of the, the the bar chart. Yep. And I was wondering, sorry, if you could give your like, your, your interpretation about you know how much depth you can really get into that, especially if you have, you know, for example, um, on the one that you, on the example you showed. Yep, I'll bring it up. Quite high on goals and strategies, mm. but equally quite low on your know, like trust and communication. Right. And you know, how you can get into the you know, like the the conversation about right. Well, you know, what does that mean to you? You know, as a team. Sure. Great question. Um, so, so I'll bring it, that slide up just so we can look at it quickly, since you know everybody's re referencing this. Uh, here we go. That is your your fourteen factors um, in bar chart form, and I think what you're referencing is we're really high on goals and strategies, and we're really low on trust and and constructive interaction, or what we call conflict hmm. uh, handling. So, so what does that mean? And and I think what you're pointing at is just sort of um, you know, what does a team do with that? Well, one of the things we'll do with this data is ask the team to start thinking about what are the behaviors, what are the tangible, visible things we do that are creating that score in the system? So, and, and, and um, which, you know, starting to, to pull that apart, like what, in what ways do we, we see conflict either working or not working in what ways are we really uh, knocking it out of the park when it comes to goals and strategies and then we start to look for contradictions connections um a blind spot effect right so often in, in a team that looks something like this what we'll hear from them is you know what we get it done we're highly accountable we have great goals and strategies and we're and we're you know we're getting things done and uh and the blind spot of that is we're choosing that instead of doing it in a way that is sustainable and builds a connection and builds a relationship over time. So, you know, what we start to hear is, is that voice in the system which says, you know, we have this blind spot which says focus on results. And that creates a blind spot around focus on your teammates who are helping get the results uh, and what, what's going on for them. So, so. You know, I hope that helps uh, the, the audience think about it a little bit. But just pushing into that um, that question uh, and thinking about, you know, what what's missing as a result of, of what, what is working. Um, so I see some other questions, uh, some things throwing on. Um, and David, I'll just chime in and, uh, with this, if you don't mind. So how is team coaching different to the individual coaching I'm doing? So very likely uh, in, in, in practice, the day-to-day the, the -day, uh, uh, questions you might ask or things you might look at might look very similar, kind of depending on what your individual relationship looks like. And what we know is that uh, once you start asking a team to change things, uh, the, the focus on the team's purpose and results uh, can get much more tangible, tactical, and, and sort of real. There's a way that, that as a team coach, we, we need to be able to keep that lens around those positivity, you know, how we're working together factors. And we need to help that team think about, and what does that mean for business results? It's not always the case when it comes to individual coaching, and in some cases, of course, it is. Um, so there's a there's a way that that is uh, that's something that I notice as a big sort of difference. Anything else, Catherine, you want to add to that difference between individual and team coaching? Well, I I mean I think that uh, you know how Socrates said, "Know thyself." And as an as a coach, mm. individual coach, we help someone to know themselves, and there's so much richness there. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's team coaching is know thyself as a team mm. and there is equal richness there. Um, yeah. so it's in a way similar, it's just more complex, has right. more depth to it. Right. There's more moving pieces. 
I love it. I just, as a, especially some, uh, someone who's, you know, been an executive with organizations and led teams, it's just like, I wish I would have had just the known about this approach, you know, when I was a leader. And, um, and I think every team deserves this work and every leader should know about this work. Right. So, so I see some, uh, some specific questions that, that I think I can answer. So one is the tools are administered online electronically. All of them are um, done. Uh, you can deliver them in a few minutes to, to any number of people. They only take 20 minutes to fill it out per person. And then those res the, the, these graphic layers and the, and the sort of um, PDFs of all of our data can be created in, in a minute or two. So it's all very, very fast, which is wonderful. They do have a per person cost uh, of uh, the TDA, the standard TDA is 125 per person. However, uh, that includes both the pre and the post assessment. So it's actually a two for one. The other assessments, uh, if uh, the, the 360 and the um, uh, Team Leader View and uh, Org View are, are between 60 and 80 per person, depending on how many you're delivering, uh, with a big exception, of course, being the uh, Team Leader View, which for our certified students is free uh, for life. Um, the, uh, the beauty of that is most, and, and part of the reason uh, that uh, that cost uh, gets covered is that most team coaching engagements are far more uh, lucrative, uh, I should say, than, than an individual client uh, you might work with because, of course, you're working with a larger team. You're often doing at least a full day up front of work, if not more. I mean, my average engagement is uh, about two, two and a half days of work up front with a team to get through kind of all the training and work we're going to do together to sort of create that action plan. Uh, that then follows on with ongoing work for at least, say, six months but often more like nine to 12 months, uh, which I'm charging as a, a sort of normal monthly sort of half day uh, rate, some, somewhere between $1,500 and you know, $4,000 per month. And, uh, and then some, some work at the very end once we've gotten to a, a sort of stopping point to, to reassess and, and, and discover how, how we did. Uh, you know, the average engagement uh, you know, for my teams is somewhere between thirty and $45,000 for me per team. Um, and I'm working with, you know, four to seven teams uh, at any one time. So it, it can be uh, sort of much more lucrative to me than, than a whole host of individual clients. Now, if you're full up on individual clients and you love that work, you can, you can make plenty of money doing that too. Um, but I find that team, the team coaching work, uh, I find I have, I have a lot more impact because I'm working with more people and, and it just sort of suits me really well. Um, I, I mean, that's like where, where I'm thinking, what I'm thinking of where I really want to aim this at the senior leadership teams, because mm -hmm. like, look, we have such precious limited time to make an impact in this world. It's like, where can we have the biggest impact? And it's like, mm -hmm. if we go to the senior leadership team of organizations and help them understand how powerful this is and, mm -hmm. and and then they change to be more positive and productive at that level, the trickle down effect, the impact effect is going to be that much greater. Um, and what I've noticed from coaching individual leaders, they're just one person. And even though, you know, coaching is so powerful, as we know, one-on-one -on -one for leadership development, that person is still part of a system. And so I'm going for massive impact. And yep. I see one, I see one um, question, which is about what are the benefits of becoming a team coach in terms of extra work and income? Yeah. And I, I definitely have been able to raise my rates a lot, like at least triple. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's for me significant. I've never even yeah. been asked before about a day rate, right? Because I right. do you know, one-to-one -one coaching, right, engagements. And, and so I was like, oh, my gosh, they just asked me for a day rate. What's my day rate? And it's like uh, $3,000. And now yeah. I realize that that's actually low. That's low, yeah. yeah. Right? And so, but I'm still learning. I'm still getting up there. And yeah. so, and, you know, and they easily go, okay, let's start with just two days, $6,000. Okay, sure. Like, wow, okay. Like, I totally get it. It clicks. Yep. Um, and if you do that with organizations that have a lot of teams, I mean, one company could keep you busy at the really nice. Cash. In fact, there are lots of our trained team coaches that literally do this with just one company. They are working with one big company that has lots of need and they are going from team to team to team. Now, uh, 
that may or may not work for you, but it, it does work and it does happen quite a bit. Um, just a, a couple other questions on here I want to highlight. So, so the shift from one-on-one -on -one to team coaching or how do you make that, that transition? Obviously our training can really help there. Um, my experience with that is you have to sort of think of it as a, as asking for that work. You have to make that intention that I want to work with teams and that's where the TLV can come in handy because you, you sort of get that automatic introduction to work with teams. Um, and, and, and helping a leader think about what team coaching is, right? This, this work we're doing is uh, very often uh, outsourced to team leaders. And if the team leader doesn't necessarily have the bandwidth skill or, or interest in doing this kind of work, very often they, they struggle. And because they're part of the system, it can be hard for the rest of the team to sort of trust them to do this sort of work. So um, there's a way that there's just a lot of need in that way. Also, Lorna asks about... Um, the methodology uh, and how, how we might differ from spiral dynamics. I will say I'm a very aware of the spiral dynamics system and have read quite a bit about it, but I don't, I've never done any of their trainings. So I, I can't speak to the, the training there. I will say, as far as I understand spiral dynamics, you know, helping a system move up that spiral is essentially what we're doing, right? Now we're doing it in a, in a more tangible, practical sort of results-based way. Um, but if you think about, like, as I understand the spiral dynamics, helping a team move from authoritarian uh, 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 view, worldview or team view to sort of a scientific team view and, and understand how the system works and what does the data say, you know, our methodology is essentially directly providing that link and, and, and helping uh, teams move in that direction um, without necessarily using any of that spiral dynamics language. Um, but we're, we're moving that teams that way. Um, yes, I'll, just, um, I'll, I'll add yeah. a little bit there as, as well, John, if I may. Um, of course, please. Equally, I've, um, I've read about spiral dynamics. I, similar to yourself, I haven't been through, through any yep. of the training. Yeah, uh, but I have been through the the TCI training um, mm -hmm. across all of the so like all of the ones that you've mentioned, and one of the things I think is the the crucial difference, and you mentioned it in your presentation, is it's mm. the language that is used, right? And uh, very similar to you know, so when you go through coach training, and you know, you have that use the language you like of the people that you're working with, right? And I find that. You know, any time you have to introduce a, you know, like a concept that has a, a piece of language that you wouldn't normally use on a day-to-day -day basis, you start then potentially to be, to be pigeonholing, and which was um, one of the things, you know, if I can make a, a slight comparison. Yeah. That, you know, if we look at something like Belvin, mm. which has sort of like team roles, mm. it's very useful to find out you know, what your individual role might be within a team but it doesn't help you to find out what the, you know, like how the team actually functions you know, right. as a system. Um, and the language that you have so like within the report and equally, uh, whilst we're looking at this slide, the, the information that comes out of the open questions, mm. which is very much right, you know, what open questions do we want to put in there to find out a little bit more information? And then you have the, the free text that they will put in, you know, is again using their language you know, to yes. back well up. Yes. You know, this isn't anything that's convoluted. This is what you're telling us is going right. on in your team. You know, I'm not making this up. I'm you know, don't shoot the messenger. And I think that for me, um, as I say, you know, just going back, you know, I haven't done any of the training, but I do find the the language of the team coaching reports are like a lot more easy to use and easy to feedback because you know, people get it. There might be a couple of work, you know, things like camaraderie, you know, like isn't necessarily one that's you know that some teams might use, but they know what it is and you know, and they, they generally get it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I absolutely well said. I mean I think the big thing that I that I know about this work is is this this I can I can basically have an hour long conversation with the team about this slide and very likely by the end of that hour they will know, oh, this is a thing that I'm doing that's impacting the system that I know I don't want to keep doing. And that, that is just so valuable because if I had to spend, you know, 20 hours interviewing the whole team to get to that and then bring that, that sort of consultative approach, I've wasted everyone's time and money. But if I can get the team to say it in that room with each yes. other, yes. then 
we're great. You know, I, I don't have to, I can, it's, it's a rounding error and a cost effective way to get to that solution for the team. And it's a way that we know will have likely have um, far better and longer term uh, sustainable results because they're making the choice. Oh yeah. We want to improve our conflict handling. We need to you know get to that trust score higher. So, yeah. You know, it's like, it's, I, I, I just so love that because, because I, you know, typically executives have a little patience, right? Mm -hmm. they, they have huge to-do lists and teams do too, right? And, and so that's why I've always loved StrengthsFinder because StrengthsFinder is in plain English. That's why I always struggled with any other assessment that has these weird combination of letters that mm. everybody goes, way, what? Yeah, am I an ISTP? What does that yeah. mean? How yeah. do I use oh, that? I'm an ENF, what? Like, yeah. and right. so, I mean, with all due respect to that work, body of work, it's just for me, as like, I like the very plain English instant get terminology. I should also add that the tools are uh, already available in 25 different languages. They can be done, you know, very quickly. And, and because of that, um, it's essentially a Trojan horse, right? These assessment tools are a way to get to that conversation faster. Um, and boy, it, that makes a difference. Uh, when you're trying to convince a leader that you're going to do some real work with them and, and get to better business results. So, uh, I'm just going to, um, yeah. if I may, sort of, I'm, I'm of course, just going to throw a, a random question in here, and it links sure. back to some of the other participants' questions about you know, the, the difference between working with an individual so like, and working with a team. Yeah. And I'm just going to uh, amend that slightly to also you know, working with the different teams that you, know, that you might end up working with. Because they, yeah. They, uh, again, taking the polar diagram that you have on the screen, yep. it yeah, it's not brilliant, but it's not it's not too bad. Right. Could you just give you a, a, a brief overview of your know, what it's like working with you know, a team that perhaps starts in this position, mm. as opposed to a team that might start you know, like really you know, like low down, super you know, low, yeah, the ones and twos. So uh, what I find is that. Um, these, because the scores have a, a sort of system subjective nature, uh, every, everyone will bring to this picture a, their own sort of version of what does that mean to me and what do I want that to look like. So um, a team in this, you know, sort of what we might call average or, or middle ground, um, what they're going to start often noticing is, where are things above or below others and what does that actually mean for behavior? So for example, on this uh, uh, chart, we might, they might look at trust and say, boy, our trust is lower than most of our other scores. What's going on there? What, what's that about? And very quickly, I'm going to turn that back to them and help them say, well, you tell me what are the behaviors that you see that represent 5.5 on trust, right? What does that look like in practice? Um, we do have some data around, uh, you know, what high performing teams, what are their highest scores versus lower, lower performing teams. So we can share a little bit of that. But what I know, what I know is that even if I don't have that or don't provide that very likely in that very uh, initial conversation of looking at this picture, someone will say something to the effect of, boy, that score bums me out. Or I wish that score was higher. And you start to hear in the system this voice around, you know, sure, we're all above five and that's good news. And I want more for this team. I want more for me and our system and our business. And if we're going to achieve this audacious business goal we've set for ourselves, we better get that trust score higher, right? So there's a way that that, that voice comes out, sort of no matter what the scores say. Um, in fact, in some, in some cases, it doesn't, to me, really matter much what the score is. It, what matters is what do you want it to look like and what will be different as a result of improving that score. So we want trust at eight, great. So now what's that going to mean? Like if I watched your team six months from now and that score is an eight, what would be practically different? What would I see as the change? And those conversations, those the sort of uh, fulfillment and, and and visioning, forward thinking conversations, very quickly start moving people into action. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can't 
backstab my partner anymore with the, every time he doesn't show up on time, right? I guess I have to think more deeply about how I'm showing up. Um, and, and, and by the way, just to the individual versus team, I still do a, a, a bit of individual coaching work, both independently and with teams. I often do offer a little bit of individual development work as part of my team coaching package because there's a way that they are interested in some of that um, and they find that if they do that individual work and they can apply it to how the team's working, that's even better. So there's a way that individual skills really do help and can be an asset as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question, David. I don't know if I, if I got it all in there, but um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The one, one thing that I found was fascinating, I, had, I worked with a team in Washington, D.C., and when their polar diagram came back, I, I sat back and was going, whoa, it's actually high. They're actually mm. high on, the, you know, it's a pretty full picture there. Right. And then through, through working with them, we found out that they had worked together for 10 years, and what happened, they were actually stuck in the comfort zone. Complacent, and, yeah. And the reason why I was like, well, why am I here is because the world around them is changing very fast. The competitors are hustling and the comfort zone was not okay with the CEO anymore, right? So it's like, so there's actually similarities, you know, like as an individual, we can be high on stuff, right? You do the wheel of life and it's like, oh, it's everything is actually pretty good. Yet the client is here. Why are you here? And it's the same with the team. So I definitely has a lot of similarities. It's fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, another question shows up here is, do you help uh, your team coaches find work? And the simple answer to that is uh, generally no, although uh, there are exceptions to that and there are ways in which uh, some bigger businesses will come to us and say, hey, we'd like you to propose this thing. And if there is a person that has expertise in that, field or function or we have that has a strong connection to that we definitely do uh, uh, help there if that makes sense um i i just we can't promise that there'll be a lot of that um uh, because in general our mission is to train uh, team coaches and provide assessments so we're, we're generally aren't getting a ton of that that kind of uh, work coming at us uh, as far as client side work um Although I, I, you know, there are exceptions to that, like I said, and, and, you know, I can think of a handful just in the last year of team coaches yeah. who've trained with us that, that we have handed off work to. So yeah. it does happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, especially if you've got real specific expertise in a particular uh, industry or, or um, you know, connections that way, where we do help client our, our team coaches find work is show them how to go tap their networks and, and take advantage of, of the work that they probably don't even realize they have right under their noses. So um, we definitely help uh, with that sort of, uh, and a lot of our, our tools, or I should say our training does focus uh, uh, at various times on sort of how do you position this work? How do you talk about this work? Because, you know, I will say most companies these days are, are at least aware of executive coaching, even if they don't use it as a service. Team coaching is still a fairly brand new idea for most businesses. So there's a way that you have to think about how do I even talk about this and, and how do I um, help a leader understand the value of it? And, and we do train on that. So great. Um, anything else, uh, David or Don, or anything else before I kind of... No, I was just going to say we're, we're coming up to, um, to the hour and um, really just for, to say you know, thank you very much for you know, like all of your information and your time, uh, both John and Katrin. Yeah. And if you have any you know, like final comments or any you know, pearls of wisdom that you would like to finish, uh, finish off on, now is the time to do so. Katrin, you want to go first? Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm thinking if you have business experience and you coach executives, you absolutely have to do this work. You will find it fascinating and very yeah. rewarding. Yeah. To that As end, I'll, yeah, I will add, not only is there a great need, I mean, we, we've started to see – in the executive coaching world that it's becoming a commodity that the businesses are, are poaching uh, coaches with the lowest bidder. Um, and there's a lot of coaches out there that are doing the individual work. So there's a way that this, you know, there's a, a bigger need because you can provide more value, frankly, make more money and uh, have more impact uh, at a team level. So I will, I will echo that completely. The last thing I'll say is back to the need and the impact. Uh, our world is, is uh, in a tough spot right now in a lot of ways. And I, I think the biggest takeaway for me is that 
there is a great need to, to, for people to learn how to listen to those they disagree with yes. and practice the skill of being with each other even when it's hard and even when it's uncomfortable. And this work is a great way to help make that real and with tangible and real results. So, um, you know, if that's, a, if that's part of your mission in the world is to, to heal the world, to kun alam, this is a great way to start that. So thanks, David. Thanks, Don, and everyone. And uh, please come and join us in London, and we'll see you soon. Or Amsterdam or D.C. Or, or Amsterdam or, or D.C. Or San Francisco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very good. Uh, you can find all the information on our website about the various dates and courses and things and, uh, and sign up and join us. Use that code. Get yourself $500 free dollars. Thank you very much. Dawn, did you want to add anything else? No, that's a perfect note to end on, John. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. And um, enjoy your next uh, webinar, which I believe is shortly. In just a half an hour, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye, yeah. everyone. Bye-bye.